So th this is um, my 10th A day. And nobody here ever thought that I would be here for a 10th A day. If I could get you guys to tell the truth, which would probably be difficult. But I do remember the first A day here that was probably as much to do with uh, the success of the program uh, because of the energy and enthusiasm and the passion that 91,000 people showed in uh, showing up to support the program, uh, which I think probably did as much to establish the foundation and the spirit around here uh, to support players, make it special again for players to play here. Uh, certainly was special for Terry and I, who had been beat up a lot about uh, coming here to start with. Um, and it certainly did a lot to make us feel very welcome and at home, which 10 years later we still feel very welcome, very at home, and very supported uh, by, by a lot of people. Uh, I think that it's really, really important uh, that we continue, our fans continue to show that kind of support because I know it's so important to our players and you know the players that we have here now are just the point, as important as the ones we had 10 years ago and uh, they, they need all the support and help that they can get and um, we want to make it special for them so I hope we have a great crowd on Saturday regardless of the kind of weather that we have. Uh, this is a great event. I know a lot of our players, former players are coming back. Uh, they look forward to this. Um, it's really, really special that players want to come back and be a part of, you know, Alabama's tradition program. Uh, it's great for us to be able to express our appreciation to those players when they come back uh, for all they did to help sort of create the tradition that we've had here in the last, you know, eight years or so. So. Um, this is a special day. A lot of special people are going to be here, and I hope there's a lot of people that turn out to try to uh, support our team. Uh, I've been really pleased in some ways with the progress that we've been able to make this spring. A lot of turns, a lot of reps for a lot of players, and I think that those players have improved. Uh, I think we have a long way to go as a team. I think every spring you always find out a lot about your team, and your team is always in the development stages. Uh, it's a work in progress in terms of getting where you want to go. Uh, we can talk about last year's team and the great leadership that we had and the great chemistry we had, but I'm not sure we had it now. I'm not sure we had it at this time of the year. So uh, this is something that develops leadership. Uh, those kinds of things. Uh, a lot of young players are going to join the team and, and right after Memorial Day in June and how, how they sort of get, be, become a part of the team is going to be an important factor to us as well. But uh, we made a lot of progress this spring and I'm excited to see how some of the younger guys respond uh, in playing in the game. I think there's areas on our team where we definitely need to um, get better, add depth, um, and that, that's going to be a real key to uh, helping us be, be more successful in the fall. So, questions? We'll start in the back from Cecil. Um, Coach, just to, to follow up on the A Day 10 years ago, how much impact did you think that that had on recruiting? And does A Day still have an impact on recruiting? I don't think there's any question about the, the fact that it has a tremendous impact on recruiting. Uh, that certainly probably was the catalyst that helped us to my comments about the spirit, the passion um, being sort of rekindled, uh, I think made a lot of players see that this was a great place to come and there was a great spirit here and there was great support for them to come here. Uh, and I think it was really important. I think it's still important today uh, that I think a lot of people try to use the the number of people they have at A-Day to sort of create that same, because that was one of the first times it ever happened. It's happened since then where people have gotten huge crowds to sort of um, ignite, kickstart, whatever you want to call a program. And I know a lot of people try to do that now, but just like we want to sustain success here, we want to sustain recruiting success, which is really probably the key, the foundation to be able to continue to be successful. I think we, we also need to 
make the spirit and enthusiasm that we show every opportunity we get, which includes A-Day, uh, that makes it special to be a player here, and I think that certainly impacts recruiting. We'll stay on that side with Matt. Nick, at this point, heading into A-Day, hey, how much separation, if any, do you feel like there is in the quarterback competition? And hey, how much does A-Day matter in terms of the, the evaluation concerning the offense is somewhat vanilla? Well, there really isn't any separation. So uh, an A-Day does matter. I mean, I think how a guy goes out there and plays in a real game-like situation because we'll, we'll have – you know, the first team will be playing against the first team and the second team will be playing against the second team. So it'll be pretty equal competition for um, each each player. And uh, they're all going to have a lot of opportunities. And I think they ha how they handle and manage that situation is really, really important. How they manage the game as well as um, the decision making um, and execution that they have to have success and move the team, which is ultimately the goal, I think for the offense and the quarterback has a big part of that. Back up front here with Mark. Yeah, two quick ones, if I may. Uh, first, did you expect to be here for 10 A days? Yeah. You did? OK. All right. God and willing. <laughs> and you know, people talked about, how many times have you all talked about me leaving here? None of it's been correct. And I still get asked that question all the time. And everybody says in recruiting, Coach Saban's not going to be here. They've been saying it for 10 years now. So how long do you do you stay before that does not that's not meaningful? Uh -huh. And the second question is with the running back numbers, how do you plan to split them up uh, for eight? I'm gonna answer my I'm gonna answer your question like you just answered mine. <laughs> I've never written that personally, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, what what did you just ask? With the running backs, how do you plan to split those guys up uh, for eight? They're split. One guy's on one team and one guy's on the other. And so they both get lots of opportunities. We don't have a lot of depth at the position. So uh, some other guys will get a chance to play too. And it'll be interesting to see how they respond. Right behind him there. Coach, what is Lester Cotton's skill set that allows him to be versatile enough to play tackle and inside a guard? Well, I think he's got good size and he's athletic enough. He's got good enough feet and range to play outside. But I do think that because he's a power guy and um, has good feet balance and body control and can get movement on people, which for what we do is really important inside, I think that lends him to be a very effective player there. I think things happen a little faster at guard than they do at tackle. So I think that the more experience and the more reps that we can get him in there, the faster he'll develop. We'll go in the middle with Alex. Nick. With sports science technology becoming more prevalent, why is it important for you in particular to have to be ahead of the game, so to speak, on some of that? And is there anything you've kind of had your eye on that maybe you, you want to try out? Not, not really. You know, we we sort of try to stay abreast of all those types of things and I know they're doing a lot of those things in the NFL and whether it's technology or whether it's actually physical things we research and we have researched some things like the Philadelphia Eagles Chip Kelly's whole you know practice hard the day before the game and don't practice much the day before because there's some theory that You'll respond better to all that. I, I don't. I don't understand it. I don't know how it works. So you you, you have to believe in it to sell it and make it work. So we feel like the way we've we've done that particular thing to this point works well for us. And I think you have to look at the whole picture. So I'm not being critical of what somebody else does. I'm saying you, this is just an example of how you research things and see if that's something that you want to change and, and try to do. Back over here with Michael. Yeah, with, with Blake Barnett, where have you seen progress this spring and what does he need to still do to improve moving forward? I think all the quarterbacks need to play with consistency and execute the plays uh, don't try to make a play when the play's not there. Don't think that every play has to be a home run. You've heard me say this many times before, maybe in the last press conference even. If 
every series ends in a kick, whether it's a punt, an extra point, or a field goal, we, we, we can live with that. We can't live with turning the ball over, so all the quarterbacks need to take care of the ball. All the quarterbacks need to execute the offense because that's what the other players expect, and I think that's how they will develop confidence, I'm talking about the quarterbacks themselves, and the other players will develop confidence in them. But I think the biggest thing that all these quarterbacks need to do is that they need to win their teammates. That they need to show that they can do those things on a consistent basis. Uh, because once you do that, then you can become the kind of leader you need to uh, really impact the play other players on offense and develop the kind of chemistry uh, that you need to develop. And I know a lot of folks here have said for the last three years that, well, you have to have a starter by here or there or as soon as possible. But if you don't name the right guy the starter and he doesn't really do that, then I don't think you really, whether you name him or not, you really don't have one. So somebody, somebody's got to win the job. And I can't force it to happen. And they're going to have to do it on the field. Last one right here with Dwayne. Coach, just on the inside linebacker, how is it looking opposite of Foster? You got Hamilton, you got Evans. How is that looking? Sean Dion has done a nice job. He's very smart, does the right thing, doesn't make a lot of mental errors. Rashawn Evans is certainly learning and growing every day. Um, I, I think that it'll be really important that we get him a lot of reps so that he can continue to do that. I think in the last scrimmage, he probably had a little overload and made more mistakes than we would like. Uh, but I think you've got to be able to stay focused on that particular call and that particular play. And you can't get frustrated in a game when you make a mistake. And that's part of being a good competitor. You've got to have enough mental toughness to overcome adversity. Sometimes young guys that are great competitors, which Rashawn is, uh, gets, gets a little too frustrated with himself. And um, that affects him sometimes. And I think that was a good learning experience for him in the last scrimmage. And hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll be able to carry into this next scrimmage a little more efficiency in his uh, consistency. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys.